Today we will be showing you how to replace a robotics assembly and spooling mechanism in the HP MSL 3040 tape library. This replacement will require downtime and should be scheduled with the system administrator. If you need to order a replacement robotics assembly for your MSL 3040 from the Rocket platform, please use part number 882-187-001. If you need to order a replacement spooling mechanism for your MSL 3040 from the Rocket platform, please use part number 882-188-001. Once you have verified that downtime is ready, you will first need to power off the library. To do this, push and hold the power button on the front panel for approximately 5 seconds. Then you can let the power button go and you should see a pop-up on the screen asking if you want to put the robot in the parked position or prepare for shipping. You will hit the selection for the parked position and the library will put the robot into the control module and power itself off. At this point, you will need to verify that the robot is parked correctly in the base module. If it is not, power the library back on and wait for it to initialize. Then log into the WebGUI of the library and go under Maintenance and then Move Robotic to Base Module. This will put the robot in the control module correctly and you can then power the library back off. If this fails and the robot cannot move to the control module correctly, Stop here and contact support at therocketplatform.com and we will assist you. Once you have verified that the robot is in the base control module and the library is powered off, you will need to move to the rear of the library. You will start by undoing the power cables going to the power supplies in the control module along with the Ethernet and host data cables. Please ensure that you label the host data cables so they can be reinstalled correctly later. Now, if you have any expansions above or below the control module, you will need to undo the interconnect cables that will be located at the top and bottom of the control module connecting them to the expansions. Then you will also need to undo the thumb screws on the alignment mechanism of the control module and the expansion directly above it if present and move the alignment mechanism from the locked to the unlocked position and then retighten the thumb screws. Now move back around to the front of the library and undo the two thumb screws that secure the control module to the rack. You should now be able to carefully slide the control module out of the rack and place it on a flat level surface. Once the control module is on a flat level surface, you can remove the top cover if there is one present. If you have expansions above your control module, you will not have this cover on top. To do this, Push a small screwdriver into the hole at the front right to retract the spring lock while lifting up on that corner of the top cover. While keeping this side raised slightly, perform the same procedure to the other side. Then pull the entire front of the top cover up and slide it forward and off the module and set it to the side. Now you should be able to see the picker assembly. The first thing you will need to do is move the robotic hand towards the center of the picker tray. This will allow you to access the robotics locking lever. Standing at the front of the library, you need to unlock the robot by moving the blue locking lever to the left, then pulling it towards you, then moving it to the right. The robot will now be unlocked for removal. Put your fingers in the large holes on either side of the robotic hand and slowly lift the robot up the tracks. It will move slowly and offer some resistance. Please do not pull it up with a fast or sudden motion as this may damage the picker. Once you have the picker at the top of the tracks, you can carefully pull it out and set it on the top of the right side of the module. Be careful not to damage the picker cable as it will still be attached. Now on the top of the robotic assembly where the picker cable is attached, you will need a small flathead screwdriver to push the small latch that locks the picker cable to the picker. After you push the latch in, you can pivot the connector downwards and unhook it and allow it to safely retract into the cradle on the spooling mechanism. If you need to replace the spooling mechanism, please keep watching. Otherwise, you can skip ahead to the robotics installation. The first thing you will need to do is manually release the left magazine and extend it out approximately 6 inches. To do this, insert a small screwdriver into the magazine release hole. While pushing this release, you should be able to pull the magazine straight back. Once the magazine is pulled out at least 6 inches, you can then proceed to remove the spooling mechanism from the library. To do this, press the latch near the top of the spooling mechanism while at the same time pulling the entire mechanism to the side. It will release and you will see it go past the narrow part of the keyhole in the back of the metal wall. At this point you should be able to pull the mechanism forward to disconnect it from the library and remove it and set it to the side. 
Now you can install the replacement spooling mechanism. To do this, first make sure you are holding the replacement with the part that attaches to the robot facing to the side. Line up the tab on the back of the spooling mechanism with the keyhole in the back left of the metal wall. Now push the mechanism in and then to the side until it is firmly seated in place. You are now ready to install the robot. First you need to verify that the robot is unlocked. Please examine the locking mechanism like you did earlier to ensure the robot is in the unlocked position before trying to install it. Now you will notice that each corner of the robotic assembly has a gear with two pins sticking out from it. Rotate one of the gears so that the pins are lined up horizontally at the 3 and 9 o'clock positions. This should make all other gears do the same. Once all gears are aligned, rest the robotics assembly on top of the four tracks that the gears slide down on. The pin should be resting on the outside of the tracks. Then you can remove the connector for the picker cable from its cradle in the spooling mechanism. Put the lower part of the connector into the grooves on the picker and then pivot the connector upwards until it snaps in place. Now you can carefully push the robotic assembly downward. It should glide down smoothly. Let it go about 3 to 4 inches down inside the library and then hold it there. Then lock the robot assembly to keep it in place. To do this, standing at the front of the library, move the locking mechanism to the left, then push it away from you, then back to the right. Now you can replace the top cover if you have one and push the magazine back in. Then you can carefully slide the control module back into the rack. Tighten the thumb screws down and move to the rear of the library. Now, if you have expansions above or below the library, you will need to engage the alignment mechanisms on the control module to the expansion below it and also the expansion above it if one is present to the control module. Now you will need to reconnect the interconnect cables you removed earlier between the control module and any expansions. You can then install all data, ethernet, and power cables to the rear of the library. Return to the front of the library and hit the power button once to power the library on. The library will now go through its initialization process. Once you have a login prompt on the front panel, the initialization is complete. Log in to the WebGUI and ensure all tickets are cleared and the library is at a ready state. You will then need to perform a robotics auto calibration in order to calibrate the picker to the control card and chassis. This process takes approximately 10 to 15 minutes per chassis assembly that you have installed. You should now take time to run an inventory on your backup software. This will ensure both the correct operation of the robotics assembly and it will also update the software inventory to match the current inventory of the library in case any tapes were moved during the service event. Any questions about backup software should be directed to your software support or manufacturer. If you are having any issues with replacing the robotics or the spooling mechanism, or after replacing both components you are still having errors on your library, please reach out to us at support at therocketplatform.com and we will be happy to assist you.